Greetings and welcome to Sunday worship at St. Barnabas Episcopal Church in Scottsdale, Arizona. My name is Robert Barra, and I'm one of the associate priests here at St. Barnabas. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. On the website below, you're going to be able to find our bulletin for today's service and also community announcements, and I invite you to take a look at those and see what's going on in our community. And now I invite you to participate in worship in any way that makes sense to you. Perhaps that's just sitting with a cup of coffee, enjoying that and enjoying our worship. Or perhaps it's by sitting, kneeling, singing, crossing yourself, whatever it takes to make it feel like you are participating and fully as engaged as you wish to be. Thank you so much for joining us and for joining us in worship.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him and all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you worry at this? Why do you stare at us as though by our own power or, pep or piety we had made him walk? the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know 
that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that this Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out The word of the Lord. Please join me in praying the psalm responsibly by half verse. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free from my hard press. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dissipate my glory? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. Tremble then and do not sin. Offer the appointed sacrifices. And put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, Oh, that we might better see better times. You have put gladness in my heart. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteousness just as he is righteous. The word of the God, of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Christ. While the disciples were telling how they had seen Jesus risen from the dead, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified. 
and thought that they were seeing a ghost, he said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Alleluia. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. It's good to see you. I was out last week. Uh, my family and I went to go see the eclipse at Totality at a small, small, small town in Texas called Camp Wood, population 517. So it's good to be back. One of the most memorable wedding sermons I ever heard began with the line, you will not be married to the same person in five years. That was not a prediction, but it was also not uh, the sermon at my wedding. If it was, I probably would not remember it. I don't remember much of my wedding day. <laughs> but the point of the sermon was that the person we will marry will change in some way. And the truth of that hit me when I think about how I told Laura I felt called to the priesthood. I had no idea that that was going to be the case when we got married. None at all. Then five months later, I think I might be called to the priesthood. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> the plan we had for our life is not the same now, perhaps. And it took, us, it took her a while to be okay with it. That happened when she was driving down the 60, and she passed a sign that said, Detour, Priest. So she... <laughs> That's a true story. That's not a setup to a joke, by the way. <laughs> she called me. It's like, okay, I guess this can happen. So. But we change. We do not remain the same. And you might notice this in other parts of your life where uh, if you went to uh, college or you went away from home for a while and you came back, the people are different. You're different. You may notice this of your children as they have grown. And you might notice this with your significant other or your spouse. And you likely recognize this within yourself. And even if you don't, sometimes it's our relationships that make us aware of these changes things that help us see what we could consider to be a progression of ourselves or deterioration as we turn on the wheels of living 
or when, when we become aware that what we thought was stasis had actually turned into stagnation, or when a breakthrough propels us into a deeper understanding of who we are at our core, or who another person is, or how God breaks into our lives in meaningful, even if small, ways. And it's not that we become diametrically opposed versions of ourselves, but we do usually recognize when we are not the same. I am not the same person I was eight months ago. That's a good thing. Yeah, that's generally a good thing. And perhaps you can say that about your own life. I'm not the same person I was two months ago, a year ago, 10 years ago. I thought about that sermon when I read our lesson from 1 John. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When God is revealed, we will be like God, for we will see God as God is. There is so much promise in that verse. It's the promise of the entire spiritual journey. And I'll say more about that in a moment, but I want to spend some time with our letter because there is an invitation to read into this lesson a self-condemnation. So perhaps these are the lines that caught your attention instead. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen or known God. Now both Acts and our letter from 1 John mention sin, mention sin strongly. And there's a temptation to think, well, we're past Lent. Why are we talking about sin? Well, the brighter the season, the darker the shadows. It's still there. And for the church, the recognition of what God had done in Jesus' resurrection begged not just for astonishment, but self-knowledge and self-reflection. Now, one of my key interpretive lenses of Scripture is that if the Bible has something to say about salvation, then the Bible is a library that points to our liberation. And that liberation includes right relationship with God and with others. But that liberative bit means that through Scripture, we might find ourselves affirmed, we might find ourselves given conviction, and we might find ourselves convicted or judged. I prefer the term critiqued. But never condemned. The difference between critique and condemnation is whether there is a path for redemption. That's why not every critique is a condemnation. In my mind, judgment is the ongoing process of discerning the truth with and under the influence of a God who is for us and not against us. Condemnation is the judgment that God will not let us have for ourselves. We don't even get to judge ourselves. Take a breath. Say amen. You don't get that responsibility. We are probably as untrustworthy with condemning ourselves as we are with condemning others, even when we think we're good at it. So I want to talk a little bit more about this letter because we'll be reading from it from the next few weeks, and John is building toward a case that culminates in the expression that God is love. John uses a lot of diametrically opposed ideas in his writing. This was true of the Gospel of John. It's true of this letter, light and dark. God and the world, or God and the devil. Truth, lies. Righteous, unrighteous. Christ, antichrist. He's using these ideal types to illuminate his teaching and highlight the distinctions between things. That's what ideal types do. They're the theoretical framework. So when John says, oh, excuse me, it's easy to focus on these idealized poles. And so we're, we're kind of tempted to locate ourselves either here or there. But what John is struggling to describe is the life of faith in the here and now of a journey. 
of a believer's journey with God. So when John says, no one who abides in God sins, no one who sins has either seen God or known God, it sounds stark and condemning. But in the very first chapter of this letter, John says that if a believer says they do not sin, they are liars. And in the promising verses from today, he admits that no one will see perfection until the end. John is not contradicting himself. He's struggling to describe life in the midst of a promise of resurrection and a relationship with God that is more like a pilgrimage than a destination. This pilgrimage leaves us in this world rather than taking us out of it. And he knows in this passage that he speaks of an end in which we see God perfectly, but not yet. Paul was on the same page when he says that we see only in part or through a mirror darkly. But Paul and John know our spiritual work in this world is what gives us the capacity to change us into being more like the Jesus whose own eternal life can bring peace, can open the scriptures, that breathes forgiveness, and that can carry us from fear into hope. It's not a contradiction. John is writing this letter in opposition to others in the community who he would call false teachers. We don't know much about them, but based on John's arguments, they don't believe they are now capable of sinning no matter what they do. Perhaps this is why John calls both them and sin lawlessness. And as a result, they find no fault in themselves as they hurt or hate others. And this is part of why John spends so much time, particularly in this letter, on loving others as a sign of God's presence. Now here's the problem with the lectionary. One of them. There's a few. It, we're getting just a snippet of the argument. Just a snippet. It becomes really easy to read condemnation when we don't have the full argument. Your homework is to go home and read 1 John. It'll take you about 20 minutes. It's worth it. It's worth it. Over the next few weeks, take care not to read your own condemnation into the text. Listen for the promise of a God who is, at root, love. There will be plenty of opportunity to contemplate the love of the God who gives us a simultaneous yes and no. It's important to remember that one of the reasons sin is mentioned so often in this is because that's a real thing. God gives us a simultaneous yes and no. This is a God who says yes to the goodness for which we were created, capable of, active within. But this is a God who still says, no, I will not leave you where you are until you're ready for the perfection of love itself, if you will but let me work within you. Hear that as a promise and grace. That's not a threat. How might you say yes to that work? Where might God be calling you into a deeper place of relationship with God? Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When God is revealed, we will be like God for we will see God as God is. May it be so, now and always. Amen.
Please stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may stand, kneel, or be seated as we pray. You have no equal, God. We come before you humbled, asking for your healing presence. Heal us, raise us, so that we may serve you. We are amazed at your creative genius, how you have stretched the heavens like curtains, and yet you bend to be with us. We are amazed, God. We raise our hearts in awe. Our world and our lives are in need of healing and direction. We ask you to guide your church and heal it where it is worn out and self-centered. Direct those who lead the church, bishops, priests, and deacons, and all those in positions of leadership. We ask for direction. Raise our hearts to you, God. We ask you to heal the relationships between nations and neighbors. Give the leaders of the nations the courage to pursue justice and speak peace as an example for the world. We ask for healing. Raise our hearts to you, God. We gratefully acknowledge the native peoples on whose ancestral homelands we gather especially the Kaibab Band of Paiute Indians. We ask for strength in relationships. Raise our hearts to you, God. Many of us suffer from addiction, anxiety, and illness. Break the chains which bind us and heal us, God. Surround us with supportive people the resources we need, and a tangible sense of your love. We pray especially for Nancy, Deborah, John, Julie, Blake, Wynne, Colleen, Shirley, Michelle, Emily, Jim, Linda, Amy, Anne, Hunter, Rebecca, Eileen, Ellen, Carolee, Ramona, Diane, Sherilyn, John, Danny, Mary, Virginia, Iduna, Margaret, Jerry, Joyce, Steve, Bradley, Chrissy, Juliana, 
Kylie, Annette, Sue, Alice, McLennan, Todd, Karen, Kit, Janice, Dave, Ray, Lilla, Elsa, Giles, Pat, Zanny, Robert, Karen, Kathleen, Ralph, Barbara, Dirk, Jim, Andy, Jay, Dick, Eileen, Stan, Amy, Carol Lee, Teresa, Bill, Jaina, Tammy, Heather, Robert, Jason, Delpha, Greg, and Robin Wolf. We ask for healing. Raise our hearts to you, God. We pray for Jean Sully and Steve Kent and all those who have died. That they may know the fullness of your love in the life you have prepared for them. Comfort those who grieve their loss and give them confidence of your love, which knows no limits of time or space. We ask for assurance of your love. Raise our hearts to you, God. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of Christ be always with you. Please give each other a sign of God's peace. Please be seated, but parents remain standing so your children may find you. Good morning. I am Dan Berner, your interim rector, and it is my privilege to welcome you this morning to St. Barnabas. If you're a visitor with you, we want you to know two things, uh, specifically that the um, sacraments that we prepare at this table are open for all. It is God's table, and you are welcome to participate to the level that you feel comfortable. Uh, so um, please take advantage of that as it uh, suits your particular situation and nature. If you wish to receive only a blessing and not take the elements, you can come forward and cross your arms in front of yourself and that way we will know to give you a blessing. Um, and secondarily, there's a second thing there. Uh, secondarily, um, if you would make yourself known to us uh, on the way out, uh, to say hello to one of the priests and let us know that you're visiting. Um, and there's also a card in the pew that you could fill out and give us more information so we could make sure that you know the opportunities that are existing here at St. Barnabas for your spiritual journey. Um, are there any birthdays or anniversaries today? We typically do a blessing at this point in time. Are there, are there birthdays? Okay. Wonderful. 
range by height, I suppose. <laughs> but that's, you know, you know where you are, right, in that, in that process. I know where I am. Yeah, but they, there we go. So, um, wonderful. So, um, oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we ask, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant them that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen them all the days of your life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Wait a minute. Was that an anniversary and I didn't do the... Oh, oh and, and as they go together, too. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the other part of that. So, um, Now, a few other announcements. Um, first of all, my gosh, Broadway Bash. It was... Uh, yeah, please, please. Um, uh, my exp first experience with it, it blew me away, and, um, and the, the beautiful thing about it is the number of people who volunteer uh, and support it in, in the ways of serving and uh, making it all happen. So it's, uh, again, it is something that just doesn't magically happen. It, it takes a lot of work, and we are grateful for all the volunteers. If that's one of you, please know that you are loved. Uh, and that uh, what you did in terms of providing us with that experience uh, is wonderful. So uh, there were um, 200 people that attended, and there were uh, over 125 volunteers. So uh, Grief Circle meets today after this service over in Sean's place. So if that would be helpful for you, um, please take advantage of that. Um, there are also concert tickets for Phoenix Brass Collective which is next Sunday, and again, look for details in your bulletin. Uh, there will be a memorial service for Jim McGovern, Friday, April 19th at 2 p.m. here in the sanctuary as we celebrate his life, and all are welcome for that. And, and then, definitely lastly, uh, some guy thinks he knows a lot about the Titanic and wants to share that information with you. And, um, and so, uh, I think it's, let me see, Thursday, at 11.30 in Hutton Hall, um, I will be doing my best to uh, talk to you about uh, the Titanic. And I will probably be bringing my um, Lego model, which is 9,090 pieces of plastic and some amount of string. You know, you have to have some amount of, you know, uh, cables and whatever. Um, and it doesn't go together in 15 minutes. I can, I can just tell you that. It's, uh, it's, uh, it takes uh, some time. But um, again, it, it, could be, it could be fun. Um, I've uh, been um, interested in the Titanic uh, since uh, early high school, and we won't say how many years ago that was, and uh, long before it became a thing, you know? And uh, so I um, want to share what I know about it and, and, um, and enjoy that time with you. So that's, that's an opportunity for you. Walk in love as Christ loves us and gives himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
You may sit, stand, or kneel as you, is your custom. The Lord be with you. And also with your feet. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him our praise and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks, for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible for before time and forever, fountain of life and source of all goodness. You made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Claim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners' freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift to those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, 
sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Barnabas, with patriarchs and prophets and apostles and martyrs, and all saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. All honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God, all are welcome at God's table.
by the river where bright angels feet have trod with its crystal tide forever flowing by the throne of The beautiful river Gather with the saints by the river That flows by the throne of God The shining river, so now a pilgrimage will cease. So now happy hearts will quiver with the melody of peace. We'll gather by the river The beautiful, the beautiful river Gather with us, it's by the river That flows by the throne of God that flows by the throne of God. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.
Cecilia, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.